Hello everyone, this is drill number 85 from Pool Billiards Co. website. The rules are relatively simple, it's a kick and drill. We try to kick the cue ball off the right cushion into ball number one, then from same position of the cue ball into ball number two, then ball number three, etc. Some of the foul rules are not in effect. For example, if I hit this ball number one and scratch, then that would not be considered a foul. If I hit this uh, right now, this ball number two, and uh, after the collision of the balls, neither of them would reach the cushion or go into the pocket, it's also not a foul. The purpose of this drill is to develop the intuition about the points on the right cushion to, that you need to hit to get the desired contact, and we don't worry about anything else. And coming back to the issue of the fouls, if you observe this shot on ball number three, this shot under normal rules would be considered as a foul. However, since we try to learn the angles, we don't care about this rule at this point. Again, after the collision of the balls, uh, uh, since free ball was frozen, then its contact with the cushion is not considered a contact after the collision. It would be a foul, but here it's fine. For most of the balls, uh, uh, the only thing that is needed that is the mirror image system. It works in a fairly simple way. We take the distance between the cue ball and the object ball. We divide it by half, which happens to be roughly at the second diamond. And this gives us the point on the right cushion that we need to hit in order to get the desired contact, which in this particular case would be somewhere here. Or we can also look at the line formed by the diamonds and we would see that uh, we need to hit uh, on the right uh, slightly beyond the second diamond in order to get the desired contact. For ball number four, the explanation of that principle is relatively simple. I call it a mirror image system because uh, if you were to place a mirror on the right cushion, then the point at which you would see ball number four is the point that you need to hit. Fairly intuitive system, but whatever you, system you use for this particular drill is fine. In fact, if you practice this drill long enough, then uh, you will gain enough intuition about the points on the right cushion that you will not use any system whatsoever. However, even with that, you need to be careful. The point is that uh, the cushions behave differently on different tables. For example, right now I play on a diamond table. Behind uh, us in the background, we have a gold crown table, a Brunswick table, and uh, the cushions on both of them are significantly different. Therefore, it's useful to practice such drills on different types of tables. Balls number six and then ball number seven are the final balls uh, for which the mirror image system works. For ball number eight, the shot will be slightly different. The reason is that for this ball number seven, I can still see the point on the right cushion that I need to hit to get the desired contact. I believe it's somewhere here. And uh, as you will see for ball number eight, as I will place the cue ball in the jaws of bottom left corner pocket, then the contact point on the cushion will happen to be inside the middle pocket. So we don't want to scratch, therefore we need to figure out another solution. And my solution is to play this shot slightly shorter, slightly shorter to the middle pocket at a touch of left spin that would direct the cue ball to the eight ball and also play it with top spin with pace. This uh, top spin will result in a slight arcing effect in the sense that uh, it will arc the cue ball towards the eight like this. Unfortunately, you will not be able to see this from this camera angle and it's also a fairly minor effect, uh, but uh, it's significant enough to make this shot successful. Shot played with pace, with top left, as you can see. 8 ball is made. It's useful to play any drill on different tables, therefore for uh, in another practice session I have switched the tables. We are one table to the left. Uh, in the top right you can see the same gold crown that you have seen previously in the background. And uh, let's start another session. 
if you are uh, perceptive, then you can also notice that for this drill, I am using another set of balls. In particular, if you have a look at ball number seven, in the previous set it was brown, in this set it is uh, bluish, I'm not sure about this color. Anyway, the reason is that the previous set was a set of aramid balls and this set is a set of cyclo balls. So we have two different brands of balls, they are made of two different resins and there are also important physical uh, features of these balls that you need to know about when you play kick shots. In particular, the cyclo balls that I'm using now are usually slightly heavier than aramid balls. There is usually around three to five gram difference between the balls. And it results in the fact that uh, some of the banks might play shorter. So what do I mean by shorter? If for previous set, the contact point at the, at the cushion would be somewhere like this for aramid balls, then for the new set, this contact point might be slightly higher. Why is it uh, slightly higher? The point is that the rebound angle of these uh, balls due to their higher mass is also slightly smaller. Therefore, we need to adjust our mirror image technique for that. However, also once we gain enough intuition by playing with two different sets of balls, uh, then, it's, uh, then we gain a useful skill. In fact, in my pool hall, it is very often the case that many people that were, uh, that were forced to play a tournament with Cyclops instead of the usual Aramis, they simply went crazy and didn't know the behavior of these balls very well. By practicing with different sets of balls, you avoid that problem, you gain intuition about a, a different set of balls and you learn to adjust and uh, be successful in a tournament when you have to play with an unusual set. final two shots. Of course, this eight ball doesn't count. The shot is correct. Of course, the collision with the seven was achieved, but the eight ball still needs to be made. In fact, as I remember, this shot uh, is a successful scratch, but uh, shot, but it's also fairly attractive scratch. And with that scratch, I will conclude this drill. Hope you learned something useful out of this video. Take care.